Today's scripture is Galatians chapter 3, and we'll read from verse 15 to 18. I'll read verse 15, and you read verse 16, and we'll read the last verse together. Brothers and sisters, I give an example from daily life. Once a person's will has been ratified, no one adds to it or annuls it. Now no promises are made to the river and to the offspring. The Lord must say, and to the offspring, as of many others say, and to your offspring, that is to one person who is a Christ. My point is this. The law, which came 430 years later, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to nullify the promise. For we do the inheritance comes from the law, it no longer comes from the promise, but God granted it to Abraham through the law of promise. In, um, in 1991, I worked in uh, Metropolis, Illinois. It's a small town on the Ohio River in the Midwest. And, um, and my boss who was a lawyer. Um, one day he was um, in a courthouse in another city. He, he was in, um, in Pulaski County on another case. And he asked me, he said, Dan, uh, go over to the courthouse in Metropolis and delay a case for me. Ask for a continuance. So, so I went over to the courthouse and, um, and the case that I was asking for a continuance on involved a will. In, in Korean, will is uh, yuan. Yes, got that. And in, in Chinese, will is... Um, Yi Zhu Ren Zhen. Okay. Right? Why not? You understand them? Yi Zhu Ren Zhen. Let's see. Okay, show me this. Okay. Oh, Shanghai. Shanghai. You know what to mention? The Chinese? I don't know. Well, well, so so I went into the courthouse, and uh, I went before the judge, and um, and, I, and I said, um, Your Honor, um, my my boss Blue, he's in another county. Um, can I have? Can we have a continuance on this case? And and the judge asked me, well, well, what about you? Do you know the facts of this case? And I had just passed the law exam about a month before that, but I told the judge, uh, yes, I, I know the facts of this case. I I read the file. I know what it's about. And the case was. A, a man who owned a funeral home and he had died <coughs> and he left his funeral home to his sons. Well, well, the judge said, um, continuance denied. Let, let's do the hearing right now. Okay, so I had to go ahead and just go ahead and do the hearing on my own as best I could. Now, there were two sides to this case. My side was representing the sons who were getting the funeral home from their father. And the other side was representing the stepmother. And the deceased father, before he passed away, he had recently married. And so in his will, he left his stepmother, or the, the, the wife, everything that was in the bank account. And he left his sons the family business. And the, and the opponent for the other person, um, well, their opposing lawyer, they were, they were the lawyer, the executor, 
in charge of settling this will. So, I, um, I, uh, on this hearing, and just to make the issues clear to you, the sons were to get the funeral home, and the wife was to get the money in the bank account. And, um, and, and so, and the other lawyer was representing the wife. So I put the other lawyer on the stand, and I put him under oath, and, and I said, um, Sir, you're trying to sell this funeral home. You're trying to sell this funeral home and, and turn it into money to put it in the bank account. And, and he said, yes, that's what I'm trying to do. So we had the hearing, and I put the other lawyer on the stand, and, and I had him admit, you're trying to sell this property that belongs to the boys, the funeral home, and turn it into money just to put it in the bank account so you can give it to your client, the stepmother. And he said, yes, I guess that's what I'm doing. Well, we left court, and, um, and, I, and I wrote my legal memo, and, and I said to the judge in my brief, um, uh, you can't turn a specific legacy like a house or a business or a funeral home, you can't turn a specific legacy into a general legacy. When the father says his, the house goes to the boys, that's a specific legacy. You can't turn it into money and sell it and make it into a general legacy. And the court agreed with me. So the boys, they got their funeral home, and whatever was in the bank account went to the stepmother. <clears throat> but Galatians chapter 3, verse 15. Brothers and sisters, I give an example from daily life. Once a person's will, you won. Once a person's will has been ratified, no one adds to it or annuls it. A will can't be changed. It doesn't matter if we're talking about Roman law or Jewish law or modern civil law. Justice says that when a parent gives an inheritance to children, Galatians 3.15, once a person's will is ratified, no one adds to it, and no one annuls it. You can't change it. So we've been looking at Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, and the blessing to Abraham, as well as the promise of the Spirit. Last week's sermon was about a promise that God made to Abraham and that God also made to us. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Last week's sermon, we said Abraham is the source of blessing. In the Old Testament... The gospel came to Abraham as a promise. The gospel came to Abraham as a blessing. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 8, And the scripture declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All Gentiles shall be blessed in you. So as we... Go through Galatians chapter 3, verse um, um, 8, Galatians 3.14, Galatians 3.15. Um, there are all these terms that mean the same thing. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, the gospel is called the blessing of Abraham. Galatians 3.14. 
the gospel is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 3.15, the gospel is this unchanging will you want. Once a person's will is ratified, no one adds to it or annuls it. So, we sort of have to put our, our legal hats on today because we're looking over the terms of a will. All these things that are prior in Galatians chapter 3, the blessing of Abraham, the promise of the Spirit, the gospel, Galatians 3.8 declared beforehand, Paul's next argument is all three of these things together are like a will. So, if we are looking closely at this will, the will is from God, Galatians 3.16. Now the promise is from God were made to Abraham. Yet Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 reminds us there are two parties that are receiving in this will. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Um, do you want to read it? Let, let's read it. Yeah. All together. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say and to offspring as of many, but it says and to your offspring. That is one person who is Christ. Okay, so first thing we see with this will is there are two parties in this will. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. Paul, he's pointing back to Genesis 12, 7. To your offspring I give this land. Paul is pointing back to Genesis 17, 7. I established this covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. This will that we're going over, Genesis, Galatians 3.15, this will that includes the blessing from Genesis 12, 3. <clears throat> In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This will that was given to Abraham when he was 75 years old. Genesis 12, 4. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed Haran. And this will that was reaffirmed to Abraham when he was 99 years old, Genesis 17, 1, when Abraham was 99 years old, 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham. God's promise to Abraham in Genesis 17, 4, <coughs> You will be the father of many nations. So that's good news for us. I'm American, Korean, Nepal, India, China. God's promise tells Abraham, you're the father of many nations. <laughs> um, the blessing to Abraham, Genesis 12, 3. 
It's for all the families of the earth. The blessing <laughs> is one blessing. But it's for all the families of the earth. The promise um, Genesis, Genesis 17.4, <clears throat> you will be the father of many <clears throat> nations. It was one promise. <clears throat> you will be a father. But it was for many nations. So Paul is making this argument... Paul says, not many offspring. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now the promises were made to Abraham and his offspring. It does not say, and to <laughs> offsprings, as to many, but it says, and to offspring. One person, one person inherited this will. Okay, um, my lawyer brains, that doesn't work. Okay, hold on. You know, Genesis 12, 3, all the families of the earth <coughs> will be blessed. <laughs> I thought that's what it said. Genesis 17, 4. You will be the father of many nations. But suddenly, Galatians 3, 16, Paul says, this inheritance is not to you, or you, or me. It's only to one person. Huh. <laughs> I don't get nothing. Uh. <laughs> I'm they, they call this disinherited. You don't get nothing. nothing. Yes. Just this one descendant gets this blessing. So, so Galatians chapter three verse fourteen. It's um, one of your scriptures. There's that phrase, the blessing of Abraham. Okay, I, I got a red jacket here. This is my, this is my nice red jacket. <laughs> nice red jacket. Okay. What if all these things I've been talking about the blessing of Abraham, the promise of the Spirit, <laughs> the gospel declared beforehand. What if all these things could be summarized with this red jacket? It's not a magic jacket. <laughs> it's just um, maybe. We understand if, um, if there was a super rich billionaire and he had lots of money, Bill Gates type, but he marries this girl with no money. Oh. <laughs> but suddenly this girl who was really poor and had no money at all as soon as she marries the billionaire, well, she's rich. Because in a marriage, everything is held in common. Everything goes together. Okay, if, if you're married, husband, wife, it's all common. It's all held together. So, um, 
Now the promises were made to Abraham and his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings as of many, but it says, and to offspring. That is one person, Christ. Abraham believed the promise. Galatians 3.16, the promise was made to Abraham. Abraham believed the promise of blessing. We believe the fact of God's blessing. Galatians 3.16, and his offspring, that is one person, Christ. Um, Christ is the fact <clears throat> of God's blessing. God gave the blessing to Abraham as a promise. God gives the blessing to us in Christ as a fact. Everything that Christ that is Christ's is ours. Everything that Christ won, we share in his victory. This blessing <coughs> comes to us in one person. Galatians 3.14 in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, us. And this blessing comes to us in one way. Galatians 3.14 So that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. The Holy Spirit is always convicting the unbeliever's heart. The Holy Spirit is always speaking to the unbeliever's heart. Acts 13.38 Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. See, when I'm <coughs> preaching, Acts 13.38, through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit convicts the unbeliever's heart. Repent. <coughs> there is only one name for the forgiveness of sins. There is <coughs> only one place for Abraham's blessing. Acts 13 verse 39, by him everyone who believes is justified from all the things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. The Holy Spirit begins faith with a fact. The Holy Spirit speaks to the sinner with a fact. Christ's death on the cross is a fact. Christ's resurrection is a fact. The forgiveness of sins found in Jesus Christ is a fact. The Holy Spirit, Galatians 3.14, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
The Holy Spirit is pointing us. This is the right road to get on. Don't ignore the blessing of Abraham. In Christ Jesus, by faith in Christ Jesus, we find the forgiveness of sins. And at the same time, if we are a believer, if we have given our lives to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit assures our heart. The Holy Spirit should make the unbeliever uneasy. The Holy Spirit should make the believer peace or give peace. So this work of the Holy Spirit um, to point us to Christ, in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. The Holy Spirit convicts our heart to repent of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit assures our heart that God's righteousness is in Jesus Christ. Now I mentioned two ages for Abraham. He was 75 in Genesis 12:3, when God told him all the families of the earth will be blessed in you. And Abraham was 99 in Genesis 17:4, when God told him, you will be the father of many nations. Well, what, what's the difference? Okay. Well, in Genesis 12, 3, Abraham was 75 years old. There was no knife. Abraham was not circumcised. He, he looked just like any guy from Korea, China, or Australia. He looked just like any Gentile. And what made him different, Genesis 15, 6, Galatians chapter 3, verse 6, just as Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Abraham's faith in these promises justified him. Uh, Paul makes this point in the book of Romans. Does this blessedness then come on the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised, that's us, also? For by faith, for, for faith, was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Romans 4.10 How was it accounted? While he was circumcised or while he was uncircumcised? It's on the back of your bulletin. Oh, you have it. Okay. Um, it's not while he was circumcised, but while he was uncircumcised. So, Genesis chapter 17, verse 10 and 11, when Abraham was 99, he was circumcised. Abraham is the father of the Jewish nation. Yet at the same time, Abraham, Genesis 17:4 is the father of many nations, us. Um, and Paul, talking about circumcision, 
and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness he already had by faith while he was uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe. Though uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. So Paul has been pointing out that the Holy Spirit assures our hearts of what cannot be taken away. Galatians chapter 3 verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. So you see, those who believe are descendants of Abraham. So, so Paul's point to the Galatians, if you have a good deal, why are you trying to change it? If your father has left you such a great inheritance, why are you trying to get rid of it? Galatians 3.17 My point is this. The law, which came 430 years later, cannot annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to nullify the promise. For the inherit if the inheritance comes from the law, it no longer comes from the promise. But God granted it to Abraham through the promise. You know, I said at the beginning, once you're given something in a will, you can't change it. Once the father said to his sons, I'm giving my funeral home to my sons, it's a specific legacy. You can't change it, alter it, annul it, add to it, do anything with it. It's a done deal. And this promise that God made to Abraham, this promise, you'll be the father of many nations, Genesis 17, 4. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Genesis 12, 3. It's a done deal. Galatians 3.15 My brothers and sisters, I give an example from daily life. Once a person's will is ratified, no one adds to it or annuls it. So, this righteousness we have by faith that the Holy Spirit assures our hearts of Earlier in Galatians, Paul said, Are you so foolish, having started with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? The Holy Spirit reminds us that the righteousness we have is by faith. Galatians 3.14 In order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Um, the Holy Spirit reminds us righteousness is in Christ Jesus. Righteousness is God's generosity to us in Christ Jesus. And the inheritance that we have gained in Christ is truly generous. 
faith is our beginning, which is really God's beginning. Faith is God's gate that our dirty feet walk through. Faith listens to the past. Romans 4.22 And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. It shall be imputed to us who believe him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Maybe, maybe I should put the jacket on now. Jacket on. Okay. Red jacket. Red jacket. Um, let's see. Where are we? In Jesus Christ, we're clothed with righteousness. In Jesus Christ. God sees us clothed with the blood of Jesus, with Jesus' righteousness. Galatians 3.3, 3, having begun with the Spirit. Well, it's, it's the Holy Spirit who tells you that Christ is your righteousness. The Holy Spirit convicts the unbeliever, find Christ, put on his righteousness. The Holy Spirit assures the Christian, Jesus is your righteousness. In Jesus Christ, God sees us clothed with God's righteousness. We can't earn it, we can't add it, we can't take anything away from it by our bad days. We can't add anything to it by our good days. It's a righteousness that God has already given. <coughs> Galatians 3.16, now the promise was made to Abraham and his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings as of many, and to offspring, that is one person in, who is Christ. By faith in Christ, um, Christ's riches are our riches. Um, I, um, Christ died for our sins. We died to sin. <coughs> Christ was raised to life. In Christ we live a new life. We may stumble from day to day and week to week, but God does not stumble in the righteousness he clothes us in and gives to us. Romans 4.22, therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed, given to him, but also for us. Faith is like this red jacket. Christ's righteousness 
is over me. God sees me with Christ's righteousness. Jesus took all our sins. Christ gave us all his righteousness. God's mercy in Christ is greater than our sins. God's atonement in Christ is greater than our works. So in the busy noise of our day-to-day -day lives that are clattering along, we might silence our tongues long enough to hear the Holy Spirit say, God's righteousness is imputed to us. Romans 4.23, it was imputed to him. Romans 4.24, and also for us. So, one of the titles for this sermon was Abraham's Children. The other title was Beginning and Ends. Galatians 3.3 Having begun with the Spirit, are you now finishing with the flesh? Uh, Abraham's children, God's righteousness is our beginning. God imputes righteousness to us. Abraham's children, God's righteousness is our end. Um, I... Where's that verse? Oh, it's in the back. There are two times at Romans 4. Romans 4.22, 4.23. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. It was imputed in the past was imputed in Jesus Christ. And then it says in Romans 4.24, but also for us. This was imputed was also for us. And then the second time is the end. Romans 4.24, to whom it shall be imputed. By faith, God's righteousness is over us from beginning to end. It is the beginning we started with, and it is the end. It shall be imputed to us that we wait for. By faith, the believers, God's righteousness is over our whole lives. So, yeah, this is a long sermon. <laughs> faith goes through God's gate. God's gate is his righteousness. Psalm 118, verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go through them and will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous shall enter. John chapter 10, verse 7. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. 
I am the gate. Whoever enters through me shall be saved. They come in and go out and find pasture. By faith we look back to the righteousness gave us. Galatians 3.6 Abraham believed God. It was reckoned to him as righteousness. By faith we look ahead not to a judgment of works, but a better blessing and a surer promise that rests on God who gives it. Romans 4, 24, to whom it shall be given, and God shall impute righteousness to us. So I encourage you to take this faith that begins all our days in God's righteousness and ends our days with his righteousness. His righteousness alone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We ask for your grace. We ask that you would give us wisdom and show us um, Jesus, our righteousness. We just thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.